Hi there. Welcome to season three of Campcast. Um, so before we get started uh, with this week's guest, I just have a, a few items of housekeeping to, to take care of. Um, one thing to update you guys on is that the podcast will now come out once um, every fortnight, that's to say every other week, um, as opposed to once every single week, which is what it used to be. Um, this is in response to uh, feedback from various listeners who have found that um, my podcasts tend to pile up uh, more quickly than they're able to listen to them because it is quite long. Some shows are up to one, nearly two hours, some of them, and people just don't have enough time to listen to a, an episode every single week and to really pay attention to it. So um, noted and um, by will of the people, uh, the episodes will now come out once every two weeks. So what will happen is um, there'll be a, on Thursday, which is my camp cast day, there'll be a trailer. And then exactly seven days after that, there'll be a full episode and then a trailer, then a full episode in sort of a uh, chessboard order. Um, Technical Tuesday. I I love Technical Tuesday. It's my, it's my favorite thing to do on the page. It's, um, it just gives me, I, I don't know, I just, I, I love having a creative outlet and the podcast is creative, but Technical Tuesday is, um, is exactly what I want it to be. It's, um, I can, you know, spend hours writing about some sort of um, crazy, really deep rabbit hole style topic and then recording the audio, or I can just do a quick top 10 list if I, if I'm feeling, um, you know, not up to, uh, up to the task of writing a full article. So, um, anyone who wants to send in any ideas or, um, you know, suggestions for Technical Tuesdays, topics you want me to write about, then please um, do feel free to do so. Um, there is an exciting update coming to Technical Tuesday soon, uh, which is in the works at the moment. Um, I can't say much more than that. It's a super duper top secret campfire project, but um, stay tuned and keep your eyes out. Um, that's not a phrase. Keep your eye out um, for an update to Technical Tuesday very soon. So, without further ado, um, my guest today is uh, Sergei Nikiforov, who is um, someone I've, I've worked with and known for a number of years. Um, Sergei is someone who um, I, I worked with uh, back in, in uh, Tumen, uh, in, a, in the language school I worked in, um, and I've known him since uh, 2013. And uh, from that time, we have both been uh, losing the game together. Um, we play the game and we lose the game very, very often. Um, to find out exactly what I mean, if you don't already, um, then uh, if you don't already know, then um, watch the full episode and all will be revealed. What game am I talking about? Hmm. Aside from that, uh, Sergei has recently started up his own page uh, called Firehose of English. Uh, so do feel free to check that out. As I quipped the other day, campfires and firehoses often don't go together well, but this is uh, definitely an exception. Sergei um, is a great guest and uh, his English, well, you uh, listen and you will hear for yourselves. So without further ado, I give you Sergei. them off the record maybe because uh we're, yeah, no, we're gonna get worry. we're gonna this get cancelled yeah 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 right okay okay but that doesn't count because yes we start officially after uh -huh. three two one Sirioga, hello hello mike uh long time no see long time uh, no well at long time not so long time no speak but long time no see this is yeah. how people are going to be talking in the definitely future. yeah yeah like virtually uh, albeit virtually yeah, only but uh better than nothing and uh yeah yeah, yeah i know it's weird zoom is weird because th there's there's a few paradoxes that you don't get in real life which you do get with zoom for example like I don't know about you, but I very often I like I switch between looking at myself, which is weird, mm -hmm. and looking mm -hmm. at you while I'm That's speaking. That's what I'm doing right now. Yeah, looking but at myself, looking at you, looking at myself, exactly. looking at you. <laughs> oh, is yours? Yours um, is horizontal. Mine's vertical. You're on top of me right Mine, now. Mine's horizontal. This, this video yeah. feed, yeah. Thing. <laughs> um, so 
I can, the only way that I can make direct eye contact with you is if I look into my webcam like this. Mm -hmm. Which is weird, yeah, yeah. Yeah, on Zoom it looks weird, right? Because yeah, yeah. I can never look into your eyes and yeah. have eye contact with you simultaneously. It's either one or the other. So um, if you were Medusa, then I'd be safe because I'd just spend the whole time looking at my web camera. Okay, and, uh, I'm not that thing, so you are safe uh, either way. Okay. Yeah. Good. Well, now, I anyway. suppose the um, the first order of business then is just to uh, let you know that I just lost the game, and uh, so have I. So have I, big okay. time. Uh, yes, all of you people watching this too. Um, but uh, please tell them what what this whole game thing is about, because I can't so, be bothered. So um, but... the game, it's not a game; it's the game. The game. So the article is very important here, where. Um, this is a game that Sergey and I have been uh, playing for, I don't know, how, how long we known each other? I'm trying to think now. Uh, since 2013, right? That's when you came uh, to... 2013 is when I came to Tumen. Yeah, yes. yeah, so, yeah. So um, yeah, almost eight, eight years, years, right? Yeah, Going eight on eight years. years, yeah. So we've been playing the game for eight years, and I think... We losing are, we the are, game for eight we've years. We've been losing the game, but you must lose to play, and you must yes, play to lose. That's how it goes. Uh, yeah. Um, I think it's safe to say we're not beginners, Maybe we've even the got to level two of the game. Losers not, no, Come on, let's let's not blow our own horns. Um, maybe it's best if you explain how, what the game is and and how so, I introduced it to you. <laughs> how I yeah, I don't necessarily remember how you introduced it to me. I think you just said uh, lost the game. That that's pretty much what you, what you said. And I was like, which game? What do you mean? Are you nuts or something? Um, and um, yeah, I, it's like a mental game, and uh, it's uh, really the rules are. Uh, inane and really uh, weird. Um, everybody who's aware of the game, uh, once they think of the game, they lose the game and that's it. You cannot win the game. Uh, you only lose this game. And now that you're all people introduced to the game, you are now right now losing the game and will mm -hmm. continue to do so every time you think of it. That's the rules from what yeah, I remember. So, and it takes it takes people a couple of times to explain it to them. But so yeah, basically that like- Pretty idiotic game. Well, you know, some people would say it's a, a game of champions, but um, like two hours from now, you're going to be eating, eating your dinner or making a cup of tea or going for a walk or doing whatever you're doing. And you'll think, oh, that was a pretty cool podcast with Mike and Sergey. Oh, they were talking about the game. Oh, shit, I just lost the game. <laughs> yes, yes, and then yes. as soon as you lose the game, everyone around you who knows about the game also loses the game. Yeah, drop the S-bomb to your potty mouth. Oh no, we, we we can swear on on this. We we can swear. It's, it's all good. But of course, yeah. has no authority yeah. in the great. UK. Great, great. It's uh, although it does yeah, always contact you, which is where I publish the podcast. True. Yeah, <laughs> I need to be careful. You are not in that jurisdiction. I still am. So, okay. Well, you can uh, go to prison for all I can. No, uh, I'll try not to. But hey, uh, <laughs> but I, I won't say anything bad at least about them. Those people. So, um, the, yeah, yeah, the people yeah. who we love, and if anyone really, yes, listening absolutely. in on this conversation. We definitely love those people. And Absolutely, one hundred percent. That's yeah. all we're going to talk. All of about. them. All of them. <laughs> whoever, whoever we're talking about, all of them collectively. Yeah, yeah. I love them all. Yeah. All of them. Yeah. Um, and then we got to level two of the game, where <laughs> I would just show up at work and I'd look across the room and say, "Guys, there eating his grechka," yes, and yes. just go. And, yeah, and me, like, me too. Yes. <laughs> we just knew. Uh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> no, yeah, yeah. No verbal cue needed. It was, yeah, yeah. It was pretty intense. A very, there, there is no way to win the game, right? Uh, again, I haven't checked the rules in quite some time. But um, uh, It depends who you ask. In some schools of thought, uh, um, in, the, in the British version of the game, if the Queen tells you you've won the game, then that's the only way to win. Mm -hmm. Hasn't happened so far. Mm -hmm. Unsurprisingly. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, one should not lose hope. Or the game. Or the game. Oh, yes, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> but inevitably, both are lost to the depths. Uh, yes, yes. Um, so I think a lot of people will probably um, know you already. Um, probably you're not, sort of, but okay. Uh, or, or not, um, you know, because you are sort of um, here, there, and everywhere um, in the ESL community. But for those and of nowhere us who Nowhere at the same time. <laughs> here, there, and nowhere. You're Schrodinger, Sergei. Yes. Uh, for those of us who don't necessarily have our ears um, pressed firmly to the ground of the ESL world, um, mm -hmm. would you mind just giving us a, a, a really quick bio, how I yeah. know you, what, mm -hmm. what you're all about, um, and what you've been working on lately? Sure. Yeah. Okay. Um, Basically, I teach English, which I guess makes me uh, an English teacher, hashtag logic. Um, yes, I've been doing that for about 10 years now. Uh, I teach um, mostly general English, although not exclusively that. Uh, I've done some 
exam prep over the years, but uh, mostly general English, all levels. Uh, I work mostly with adults uh, in person as well as uh, online. Um, teaching uh, wasn't um, sort of uh, initially um, something I was planning or training to do. I At university, I majored in uh, linguistics, English, and intercultural communication. Uh, then back in 2011, when I graduated, uh, I obviously needed a job. Very quickly, it transpired that uh, I couldn't be an intercultural communicator because it's just not a thing that people pay for, <laughs> uh, at least over here in Tumeng, where, where I'm from, uh, where I'm based. Uh, that's my hometown. Uh, so I needed a job and um, I still wanted to do something that's um, like directly connected with uh, uh, English. Uh, and if, if that's what you want to do, I, I guess you, your choices are pretty limited, right? Because it's either going to be, I don't know, like translating or interpreting uh, or um, teaching English, right? Um, and I did, just decided to um, yeah, try my hand at uh, teaching, which seemed like a relatively sort of easy and logical progression. Mm -hmm. um, um, yeah, that's when I started in 2011, first part-time. Uh, then a year later, full-time at CT is when I started working at CT in 2012, which is that school where you, you know, a year later, right, 2013 is when you came. Uh, I just at that time done my uh, CELTA, uh, which, you know, people who uh, are uh, in the CLT world, they know uh, CELTA is a very well-known teaching qualification. Yeah, it's a, an abbreviation, right, CELTA. Certificate in English Language Teaching to Adults, I think, is what it stands for. Yeah, um, uh, yeah it's it's an initial teacher training qualification, um, but, you know, it gives you a solid foundation, which I needed because, again, I, I did not major, like, teaching was not something I studied uh, at university. Um, so it was... Uh, you were I too guess, busy with all of that international communication. Yeah, 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 all this very important stuff. <laughs> I love that. Stuff. Like, I just wanted to be an international communicator. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Uh, it, it's a bit of like there's this term underwater basket weaving. I don't know if you've heard of that, meaning like a useless degree underwater basket weaving. Just imagine that a useless degree that you do, you know, and then like you, you have a degree and what are you going to do with it? Well, luckily for me, uh, at least I learned uh, English there, you know, to, to some uh, extent, obviously. But um, so I, I could still apply, you know, some of the skills and stuff that I had been studying uh, uh, at, at university um, when I graduated. Uh, yeah, but um, yeah, this intercultural communication thing, it's uh, turned out to be a bit yeah, of a... It's like, it's like people who, um, I mean, I, I, I love the history of art. I think mm -hmm. the history of art's great, but yeah. it's like people who go to university, study art history for like three yeah, years. And uh, then yeah. like, I can't they will enjoy like, working oh at... Yes, yes. <laughs> they will enjoy working at a fast food restaurant uh, selling burgers or something, I don't know. Which, yeah, that's not necessarily what's going to happen, but um, they will probably not do that thing they studied um, yeah 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 and then um, yeah uh, 2013 you uh, came to uh, to me yeah and uh, that's how we met um, I introduced you to the game and it was just downhill from there and that, your life just took a turn for the uh, worse that's one way of putting that uh, <laughs> another way is that you improved significantly my quality of life by enriching my inner world with this knowledge uh, sacred and uh, very important. Um, <laughs> it is kind irony. of like a cult now that I think about it. Come and join us. Come and live at the game residential center and you can give away all of your savings. Uh, yes, get yes. to level six of the game. <laughs> level six, yes, yes. Um, so yeah, yeah. And now here I am, you know, 10 years uh, later still teaching English, which uh, I um, intend to do for at least the foreseeable future. But um, I don't know. We'll, we'll see how things go. So We will. That, that's That's the short version. I don't know if that's good enough or not. Tell me, is it good enough or not? It's not good enough for me. No, okay, it's fine. It's fine. Um, Perfect. Perfect. <laughs> don't worry. Um, yeah, self is an interesting thing because I I didn't I didn't do self in myself. Mm -hmm, I did um, mm -hmm. I did like an alternative like TEFL thing if you mm -hmm, know, if you know TEFL, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. which is but yeah same same sort of same thing just repackaged. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, it, it is a little bit like a sausage factory, proverbial sausage factory, in that mm -hmm. it's just, you know, it's designed to get people through mm -hmm. the course as quickly mm -hmm. as possible. Mm -hmm. and then, mm -hmm. But then the, um, the thing is, it, it does, as you say, provide you with a useful base, um, you know, of sort of standard pedagogy and, and um, classroom management and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. But it, it, mm -hmm. it won't save a bad teacher. I've always thought that mm -hmm. a, a lot of teaching is intuitive. You just, 
you you know how to explain stuff but mm-hmm. you, having said that you will make a lot of mistakes mm-hmm. and, uh, and slip so right, ups yeah. in your early career and i think back to my first lessons and i think jesus what was i thinking it was such a terrible class terrible idea i had no yeah. control but then yeah. you sort of develop as a teacher and it becomes intuitive right so mm-hmm. selta will cut through a lot of that bs mm-hmm. um not dropping the ass bomb anymore Mm-hmm. or the mm-hmm. shit bomb as i call it yeah yeah um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the Solansk bomb um it will cut through a lot of that bs but it won't save a bad teacher it won't save mm-hmm. someone who just hasn't hasn't got that that now that spark do you, do you see mm-hmm. what i mean do you disagree yeah i guess i mean some teachers you know or like quasi yeah bullshit teachers uh um which there are bullshit doctors bullshit lawyers right bullshit everything uh dropping a lot of uh bombs now as bombs um as long yeah. as you don't drop the fuck bomb we're okay yeah uh, that that fucking bomb i won't <laughs> drop i promise uh, oh i i have just done that uh, anyway um so yeah i mean some some people are just not gonna they're not this kind of material right they're not gonna be uh, good teachers for whatever reason um maybe sometimes it's just not their go i think there's a lot of like foreign teachers right from i don't know america or you know some english-speaking countries they just want to travel the world right and that's just they need a job they need somehow like a source of income uh and they think oh i can i can travel the world and like find a, a wife somewhere in russia maybe which uh um yeah i'm sure we'll that's that. um, <laughs> um uh, so, oh, right okay I, that was that was actually not meant as a uh yeah uh i was not meeting this uh in any yeah, yeah, uh yeah 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 um but um obviously like some people you know that that being a good teacher is never their concern or primary objective you know mm. um which you know that that obviously applies not only to foreign teachers right russian teachers i mean again there's um all sorts of people and some of them they're just not good for whatever reason uh yeah again the selta thing it's it's very um very basic right the full-time option is four weeks is what i did right the full-time option uh i mean it's it's very it's like a crash course right uh you'll get the basics the, the theory uh and uh you know there's this practical component where you teach they observe you they give you feedback it, it is valuable right um especially if you're just starting out i i, I um you know um i i'd already been teaching for about two years by the time I, I started my CELTA in 2013. So I, I already had some experience. Maybe it was easier for me in many ways, especially, you know, I you know, have a um, degree in linguistics, right? Five years. So like all the sort of theoretical stuff about English, all the terms and whatnot, I had a solid, I think, uh, grasp um, and understanding in, in that area. Uh, but um, yeah, I bet that, you know, some people, it's not going to help them, but yeah. Um, to those who are more serious i guess it's a good start you got to start somewhere right it's a yeah an initial teacher training qualification but it's uh um something that can help you along the way Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. absolutely absolutely um but fyi just just so you know while i'm speaking people are probably going to go crazy if i don't Mm -hmm. um let you know um Mm -hmm. try not i should have said this before we started taping Mm -hmm. but whatever Mm -hmm. fuck it Mm -hmm. um try to stop humming in agreement because every time you do zoom cuts to you and it cuts out me and vice versa so yeah sorry i should just say that (laughs) i don't know i I will be more like aware of that now but uh i I don't even notice how i do that is that like this mm -hmm that i do Mm -hmm, yeah 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 Um, Yeah. no everyone does it i should have i should have told you before we started taping um but um yeah you don't notice it while you're teaching uh, but then when you start recording podcasts, you're like, ah, that's what it sounds like. But, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, yeah. Mm-hmm. And some, oh, you it, can't just... stop yourself, can you? It's, but it's because you're, you're a sociable guy and you're a skilled communicator and you just want to hum in agreement and uh, just, you know. If I agree, if I not, I will, you know, uh, drop F-bombs in disagreement. And hopefully not lose the game in the process. Aha, everyone <laughs> just lost the game again. <laughs> <laughs> All right so uh in terms how's of- sorry how's, how's that a problem exactly okay so i do this mm-hmm, and then like is it gonna be like just it doesn't sound good or no no so for example it- if i'm saying something and okay. i'm like i'm saying stuff that said is agreeing with and you're going mm-hmm, mm-hmm, in the background mm-hmm. then zoom is gonna want to cut to you mm-hmm. so some programs like if have you ever used um what's the yandex one like td or something like that i think it's called mm-hmm. i can't remember I-, I don't know yeah yeah some programs they will sacrifice um everyone's audio and so you you can hear everyone but it goes a bit quieter uh-huh. zoom doesn't work like that zoom will sacrifice a lot of audio and cut to one person and you can only hear them humming seriously yeah yeah that's not something i've uh 
yeah okay thanks for letting me know again it, it will probably it, it might be difficult for me to actually start uh, implementing that uh, but uh, i'll try <laughs> I'll do my best. i will just Don't be worry. quiet you carry on speak okay okay by the way we, we never cut this this is always unedited so all of this is going to go in the podcast is that Should because be. i like the organic uh naked unaffected raw nature of genuine oh, conversation or is it because i'm lazy bit of both if i'm honest i can't be bothered to edit it um mm -hmm. and i do like it i like um i like the wrinkles in a podcast i like mm -hmm. the 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 cock ups mm -hmm. and the moments warts and all right. yeah exactly warts and all because that's mm -hmm. what communications like communication mm -hmm. is like like th the thing that that i i would say when i was invigilating um like pet for example right a pet listening exam is so funny like like if you need if you do like fce cp listening they're, they're pretty you know you can tell they're fake but they are pretty genuine examples of how people speak right but if you listen to like a pet listening or even worse a cat listening exam it's like um the question is like um you know which country is um jemima going to visit on holiday i think i might go to spain then again, Greece is pretty good. <laughs> you know? so, yeah. Oh God, it's just such a pantomime. But you gotta, yeah, like it's like with teaching, you've got to start somewhere. Mm -hmm. And it's it's interesting to go back and listen to that kind of material. Obviously, for me, and cringe, like, and cringe. Yeah, but with with Russian and Spanish or whatever. When when I there was a time when that was in, supremely difficult for me. Mm -hmm. Like there was a time when you know. When Jimi Hendrix was crap at guitar, well, I, I'm not saying was that, you know, Jimi I mean, Hendrix ever crap at guitar. Well, yeah, when he started playing. Yeah, right? I, I was just kidding. I'm just uh, lol. Yeah. lol. <laughs> um, uh. But you know, and I'm, I'm not saying that you know I'm the Jimi Hendrix of Spanish. <laughs> you know, far <laughs> far from it. Um, and in reality, not that Jimi shit Hendrix, after all, right? Exactly. Well, yeah, yeah. To be fair, Jimi Hendrix was a fairly average blues guitarist. Mm -hmm. it, was, it was more like the, his cultural mm -hmm. with people. Um, people I'm not so, super knowledgeable but I, I like a few of his songs well, uh, yeah. well of course my favorite russian uh, artist is none other than mikhail krug which you know he is very that, good indeed you're, you're to say you're, mikhail krug in english um, michael circle, michael circle. <laughs> 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 that is uh, pretty idiotic indeed yeah but uh, yeah yeah as is the artist so is the translation uh -huh. so <laughs> tell me about this uh, fire hose business Firehouse, Firehouse of English. Dot com. Uh, do you think it's better? Firehouse of English or The Firehouse of English? I decided to sell on Firehouse, uh, like, you know, Facebook. It was originally The Facebook, but then they dropped the, this The, and it's now Facebook. I don't know. I like Firehouse of English better. What God do you think? Russian hackers forgetting uh, their articles. <laughs> yeah, I, I continue in the proud Russian tradition and just ignore articles. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah, uh, and, and in all seriousness, yeah, I like it without The. Better. yeah yeah just i i think it somehow sounds better this way uh yeah it's uh it's um a new little group that i um uh, uh that i've uh set up recently on vk which is this russian uh social media website which uh, obviously uh, i'm sure all of you people watching probably know only russians uh, watch this trust me <laughs> yes yes that, that's why I, I you know i sort of i i have this natural inclination or tendency to clarify things maybe it's a teacher thing but uh that was unnecessary yeah um i've only just started it i don't really have a, a very clear sort of goal as to what i want to do it's um uh, i came up with a little tagline there uh which for now is at least uh, uh geeking out over all things english and language uh, that's what i decided to um to to right there geeking out because like you know language is a bit of a niche thing you know some people won't be able to relate to this uh interest um you know all things english and language that's pretty self-explanatory I, I like english i've been learning english for a long time i've spent uh a, a, a many many hours learning it uh, and um yeah i'm interested in language too like languages linguistics german i'm learning german uh so um it's it's again i'm not sure exactly uh what it will sort of lead to or develop into we'll see maybe nothing maybe something uh it's just an experiment i'm, I'm soon going on holiday so i'll have a, a more free time to to you know do things and, and experiment um um yeah yeah so so 
when when you say geeking out, what what do you love geeking out over? What's your favorite things to get? And what do you mean by geek out? You just mean like look at like interesting various because you, you know I'd have my like my technical Tuesday. Mm-hmm. That that's my st- that's my Steam Valve uh, mm-hmm. geek out wise. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you? yeah. Um, I don't know. Like, for example, some of the um, and since I've only just started, I um, you know, there the, the hasn't been. I haven't yet published a lot of new content. Uh, there are some like down in this uh, news feed, right? There, there are some older posts that uh, also that's my content that uh, um, I uh, originally published in another community. Um, but again, the content is all mine uh, from start to finish. Uh, but it's going to be more of the same. Which I don't know. Like looking at one of my recent posts, uh, I don't. For example, there was um, like I'm a bit of a news junkie, right? So I read a lot. Like I read the news uh, maybe obsessively. I, I listen to a lot of podcasts. I watch stuff on YouTube. So uh, I, I, I consume, so to speak, English every day. And if you're careful, if you're attentive, which I'd like to think I am. You, you always notice something. Again, if that's what your uh, interest is, you know, language. Mm. Uh, and uh, I don't know, there was this thing, um, I was reading um, like a, some, some tennis related article. I'm not uh, like into tennis really, but for whatever reason, I opened it, decided to read it. And there was this, um, 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 what's her name? Venus Williams, right? Uh, former, former world number one, uh, which she said, she, she was asked a question about how like she sort of mental health and how she deals with media attention, which obviously some people, you know, find it easier. Some people less so. Oh right? yeah. This was on the radio. I heard about that. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And basically she said like uh, answering that question, right. About like what helps her to deal with the scrutiny attention, right. Maybe sometimes harsh uh, questions and whatnot. And she said, um, I'll quote here. It's uh, just one sentence. For me personally, I know every single person asking me a question can't play as well as I can and never will. So no matter what you say, all right, you'll never light a candle to me, right? What she said, light a candle. And I sort of, you know, I just um, wrote a post, uh, published it and asked people like, hey, what do you think she meant, right? This light a candle thing. What does it mean exactly? It looks like an idiom. Uh, can you find it in a dictionary? Um, you know, sort of implying that maybe you won't be able to. Uh, and the thing is, my understanding in this context that what she meant was like, uh, you know, uh, th- those people, reporters, right, asking her questions, they can't hold a candle to her, right? Mm-hmm. Um, meaning they are not as good, they're inferior and never will be as good uh, as she is. Um, but that's not quite what she said, right? She said, uh, you'll never light a candle to me instead of you'll never hold a candle to me, which uh, I found that interesting because it's an idiom, right? Idioms are usually, they're supposed to be like, um, you know, formulaic, that they're, they're fixed. You, you often, not always, but often you're not supposed to change them, right? Uh, they, they function, um, you know, just in this fixed state. Uh, but obviously sometimes people still distort them, right? By replacing these sort of uh, individual constituent components, parts. Uh, and sometimes the idiom will completely fall apart, right? But sometimes not so. Not in this case. It's still understandable 100%, I think, what she meant. Uh, but um, I just found it interesting. It's like, you know, in Russian, if you say, like, big baklusha, right, which is an idiom, you're not actually biosh. And you, what baklusha, what the hell is baklusha? Most people, a lot of people don't even know what baklusha is. Um, but, um, again, that, that's a fixed idiom. If you say instead of big baklusha, if you say big derevyashki, Right? I mean, like, uh, it, it falls apart, right? Yeah, if you yeah. say instead of a bit baklusha, if you say instead of bit, if you say kaloit, I don't know, maybe slightly better, but still not quite as idiomatic, right? Um, so, um, I don't know, I, I thought it was interesting. That 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 is what I find interesting. Yeah. Or... Yeah, yeah, that's one example. There's sort well, of well. Let, let's go down that that avenue because it's isn't. I think one of two things is probably happening here with Venus Williams that either it's a case of like mixed metaphors, which is mm-hmm. not uncommon, mm-hmm. um, or it's as you are describing here, but mm-hmm. not necessarily suggesting. I think you're mm-hmm. open to it. Um, mm-hmm. It's it's a sort of creative kind of poetic license. Uh, like I can't think of a good example off the top mm-hmm. of my head, but mm-hmm. it's like you know when people say um, metaphorically, they say um th- there's okay in russian people say like um a girl uh mm-hmm. meaning it was mm-hmm. it's, a, it's a sort of innuendo mm-hmm. talking mm-hmm. about chest yeah yeah right? yeah um that's not quite the same thing but it's 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 almost mm-hmm. there it's like mm-hmm. people deliberately changing mm-hmm. um a, a well-known phrase or a well-known expression yeah. for humoristic that, effects that, that's why i acknowledge sometimes people do this on purpose right for, for whatever reason maybe for you know like to create some kind of comedic effect humorous uh effect right 
um, that that's one thing that's possible, which is being creative with, with the language. You might do this yeah. on purpose. Again, here, I don't know if she meant to do this. Maybe, you know, just, you know. I don't um, think she did. I think it's yeah. mixed metaphors. And you get this quite a lot with um, with common phrases which get um, misheard. So I'm trying to think of some good examples here. So um, there's the phrase, which I'm sure you know, mm -hmm. of course, mm -hmm. which is um, to be on tenterhooks. T-E-N-T-E-R, to be on tenterhooks. And a tenterhook is a type of hook which hangs from the ceiling like in a butcher's, right? People very often mispronounce this phrase as to be on tender hooks. Yeah. Tender as in soft. Yeah. There's another phrase, a damp squib. A damp squib is kind of like a wet blanket, a party pooper, that kind of thing. People often mispronounce it like a damp squib. Eggcorn, right, is what it's called, I think. Yeah, exactly. An eggcorn. Eggcorn. Which an eggcorn is an example of itself. Mm -hmm. um it's it's homological um and mm -hmm. so uh, an acorn is a mispronunciation a misunderstanding yeah of the word misinterpretation mis, mis yeah you mishear something misinterpret something yeah which is interesting because um you'd never really hear that in british english because of the way that we say acorn it sounds mm -hmm. nothing like acorn mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. because of the way that an american might say it mm -hmm. okay a corn and egg mm -hmm, corn is mm -hmm. that's really similar so that's, yeah. that's why there are some um slips in pronunciation which which are common to all mm -hmm. areas of english mm -hmm. and then some which um yeah just don't um don't occur in certain varieties which is mm -hmm. really interesting yeah yeah maybe it was a case of that yeah uh, well, for what again whatever that was i thought it was interesting or mm -hmm. again an another recent post of mine about like uh um, like dates, right? How we um, sort of say dates in English. We use sort of ordinal numbers, right? Um, you know, the 5th of June, June the 5th or June 5th, right? In American English, they, I think they drop this the. Um, but yeah, apparently like it, it's a thing. It's a maybe maybe sort of a very fringe situation, but some people go to say June 3, June 2, right? Um, I don't know, like broadcasters or something. Yeah, maybe reading more of an American thing. We probably, were, probably. Yeah. But again, what, what I found interesting is that you uh, you learn early on, right? I mean, my elementary students, A1, A2, A right? They know that at least they know in principle, they might not always be able to sort of uh, accurately produce this, right? But they know it's like the 5th of June, the 3rd of June. August, right? August the 3rd, August 3rd, if you're American, that you're not supposed to say August 3, right? But again, I, I found it interesting that, yes, some people do say that. It's, uh, again, maybe a, a fringe thing. It's not common. That's not what you normally say. But in some situations, people mean to say that, and it's not a mistake. I think it's interesting. Um, yeah, yeah. So that kind of stuff. Um, I have other ideas too, so... Like I said, I've just started and uh, th there's never any shortage of material. Again, like I said, I, I have like my um, Gmail account, like uh, I've created um, in my inbox this this tag or this separate folder for my sort of English uh, related, um, yeah, something attempts. I don't know. Uh, well, I wish you um, all the very best of luck with that page. And uh, yeah, if um, if you want to come on here again and promote it, let me know. I'll spread the good word. If you want to start your own podcast, I'd be honored if you'd even consider having me as a guest. But uh, the sure. show, no means obliged. Um, um, again, in terms of promotion, I mean, it would be nice, of course, if, you know, if, if it, you know, catches fire and, um, you know, um, starts going places. But uh, for now, it's, it's, a, it's just like a hobby, pretty much, right? I'm not like, That's for now, same, anyway. It's the same for me. Yeah. The yeah, same for me with Campfire. I, because mm -hmm. I'm so, I, I'm very fortunate to be in a situation where I, I do my nine to five and I earn, mm -hmm. I earn a crust and, and you know, um, and um, sort of support Mm -hmm. my family like that mm -hmm. but at the same time i've got this sort of supplemental stuff which i'm doing on the side but because i'm not really motivated by money i can mm -hmm. just do whatever the hell i want yeah yeah and sometimes people will like make recommendations about the podcast right mm -hmm. so sometimes people will say it would be super helpful if you could um you know break down the topics and put mm -hmm. time tags I'm like, okay that, Th that's, that's useful really i've noticed you, you started doing that and i started doing that yeah I started useful. Doing that. But then some people are like, oh, this was such a boring guest. You should never have him on again. I said, your problem. Whatever, right here, yeah. To, yeah. I'm going to do whatever I want. If you don't sure. like it, I'll just speak to myself. Yeah. And, just, and Just move on, yeah, to, yeah. to, to each their own yeah. and just, just yeah. There's a the great thing about all Mind these, your own business. Exactly. All of these, like, niche uh, podcasts and shows. Mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. It's even, like, with TV shows and series mm -hmm. and movies mm -hmm. now because there's just so much content out there. Yeah. Everyone's yeah. got their own like mm -hmm. niche show. Mm -hmm. Think about what Campcast is. Really, we're just talking 
talking about all sorts of nonsense mm-hmm. but at the same time it's an esl podcast specifically aimed at the russian market mm-hmm. um within a very specific group of people on vk it's a niche and a niche and a niche but th- there's a niche for that too nicheception nicheception yeah, yeah. niche <laughs> <You should be>. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> so okay. Uh, um, so speaking of uh, words harshly pronounced, uh, oh, postposition adjective, nice. Mm-hmm. Um, nice, nice, nice. Um, let's talk about um, Deutsch. Deutsch. Because um, okay, why don't why we also known as German in English? Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks. So everyone knows that's how you say Deutsch in English is German. Um, so everyone knows the context. Why did you start learning, if it's Ooh. not a secret, uh, German? Yeah. And what, what, what was the whole story behind that? Yeah, that, that, that's going to be a, a, yeah, a long story. Uh, I will try to, yeah. Um, basically, okay. Um, I sort of originally, at first, I started learning German. It was years ago when I was 10 sort of uh, the school where I studied, um, we, we were supposed to study two foreign languages. The first one was English, and that was sort of my our primary focus there. But the second one, you, you were supposed to choose either French or German. I chose German because, well, I thought, you know, some, some people in my family who, who'd studied German at school, maybe they could help me. Or, but plus also I am actually, I'm, I'm half German. Yeah, ethnically, my, my dad's Russian, but my mom's uh, German and the whole maternal side of the family, they're all German. I have some relatives in Germany. So I thought, okay, um, German then. Um, I, I studied it for like seven years, I think, at school without much success. I didn't really like it back then. It was uh, just, you know, it was, you know, um, part of the curriculum, right? I had to do it. I had no choice. Okay, um, I finished school. Uh, I thought it was fine, done with German. Then I uh, went to university, uh, and then my third year at university wasn't done with you. A German wasn't done with me, most definitely it wasn't. Uh, so my third year at university again, I was supposed to because you know it was um, sort of um, um, you know linguistics, right? So, um, English, it was languages. This department where I studied um, we was supposed to study uh, a second foreign language, which again I chose German because you know it made perfect sense, right? I'd already sort of studied it before. I, I had a more or less solid foundation again. Um, to fall back on. Um, so I studied, I was sort of more uh, more conscientious now, you know, slightly older and more more serious about it, but still was, again, just a formality. It was a formality for me. The teachers, you could see, they, they, they were not that interested um, either. Uh, so um, three years later, 2011, I, I graduated. Um, my German was, I don't know, maybe A2 really. I mean, passive skills, maybe I was better, but in terms of production speaking, um, I was uh, pretty much a, a non-speaker. Um, and again, I was like, finally done. No, no more German in my life. I'm done with it. Um, and then um, five years later in 20, uh, roughly, uh, yeah, basically late 2016, I think I I found out that there was a, a, an option for me sort of um, because I'm half German, right? One of my parents, my mom, uh, ethnically, she's German. Um, and um, there's um, in Germany, there's this law that people like myself, people from uh, former Soviet republics, uh, provided you meet certain um, requirements and you prove certain things, um, and jump through some hoops. Um, you, you, it's there's a path to uh, German citizenship, right? Uh, and it's a very, it's a very sort of um, fast track to a German passport. Uh, so I in early. Uh, January 2017, I found a German tutor, started uh, studying German again with her. Uh, and uh, in like seven months later, uh, August 2017, I went to uh, ECAT, Ekaterinburg, and uh, I took my um, like B1 a German exam. Um, um, basically, like like with with English, there's these Cambridge exams, right? Uh, Cambridge Assessment English, or whatever mm-hmm. they're called now. Uh, with with German, there's um, a bit like that. They have this Goethe Institute, um, mm-hmm. and they have their own like German exams, international exams, um, recognized. Uh, um, well, it's a again well known qualifications, uh, and I needed B one is what uh, I needed B one or higher. Um, so yeah, I, I did pretty well actually the exam. Um, there's there's four skills right, like speaking, writing, uh, and so on. Um, speaking, writing, reading, listening, right. Uh, and for each skill, you can get a maximum of like 100 points. 
uh, 100 points here, and I, I, I pretty much aced it. I got um, 390, yeah, 390 out of the maximum 400 points. Everything was 100 except listening. Uh, it was 90 out of 100. I, I really... I'd really spent, uh, yeah, I, I'd, I'd really spent a lot of time sort of preparing. It was, I, I was really sort of serious about it. I wanted to do it like as quick as I, as quickly as I could. Uh, and uh, I, I had about a hundred hours, um, like 60 minutes hours, yeah, astronomical hours with, with the teacher. And then I did about five times as much on my own. And I know like, I'm very careful here and specific with numbers because like I went um, that year, I went on holiday and um like four weeks paid holiday and the remainder of the summer unpaid and every day like i i have my um i had my stopwatch a watch with the stopwatch function uh i was uh, sort of it was my goal to study for uh, about five hours every day i had a an a4 piece of paper every day you know i would write the date and the, the number of hours spent that day um learning um, learning German and uh, at the end of that uh, sort of three month period, it, well, okay, in total from January that year to uh, leading up to the exam, it was uh, about 500 hours on my own. So roughly that added up to like 4.6 4. hours, roughly. I, I calculated being, being you know, uh, half German and you know, so we are quite methodical people, yeah, efficient people, we, we like Ordnung you know, and, and stuff. Uh, so yeah, it was 4.6 hours uh, a day, which, you know, if you round it up mathematically, that's five hours. So, uh, you know, mission accomplished, so to speak. Um, yeah, and now um, it's been almost four years since since um, uh, that exam. Uh, I'm mostly now learning on my own. Um, I, I, you know, sometimes I have classes with a teacher, not, not at the moment, um, mostly informally on my own, you know, like listening to podcasts again, um, reading stuff in English uh, or in German uh, online, um, practicing like with people and language exchange. There are like websites and apps you can find where, you know, someone is learning Russian and uh, you're learning German. So you can do like half an hour of yeah, Russian, yeah. half an hour of German. It's for free. Of course, these people, they're not guaranteed to be like teachers or linguistically minded people, but it's um, it's, it's some some practice. Some practice sure. is better than no practice. Sure. So th there are options even for free, I think that you can do. Uh, that applies to English too, obviously, right? So, um, you know, people watching this, they're learning English. And you know, there's, there's lots of options. You don't even have to necessarily pay anybody if you're really like interested and driven and motivated i think uh you know well, this, this um, if the there's a will there's a way so to speak to yeah about being driven and interested and motivated because i remember mm -hmm. when when you were in this phase just before you went into your i remember i remember one day we were going to esap uh, <laughs> we were going somewhere uh we we're going somewhere most definitely uh by taxi and you said like um it was like um an um, an off the cuff comment you said like um but, but you said like by august you want to do by august uh, and it must have been like i don't know maybe march or something you said hmm, don't you think it's a bit of a, like a tall order i mean like like you know it's you know not a lot of time uh, mm. and i said oh we'll see well ultimately you know i, I did manage to do that but you know I, I i understand why you said that it's uh yeah and and you know props to you because as i say i, I remember when you were just about to go into that cocoon of intense german learning and emerge a, a b1 level butterfly um and yeah it was insane you were just just constantly just at any moment that you weren't talking to another human being or working in class you were listening to audiobooks and podcasts and german news sites reading mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. and then presumably at home doing whatever you were doing with grammar yeah and yeah and, was... and stuff and and it just goes to show like getting up to what you say you got up to b1 b1 how many yeah. months how many months uh, again that was exactly seven months but if, of course you do need to sort of take into account that you know i i i'd, I'd studied german right for quite a long time uh, at school at university before i sort of resumed my efforts again then, that even year if, even if we yeah. consider you to be in in the late stages of elementary which i think mm -hmm. is generous but let let's say for our yeah. sake, we consider yeah. that you were late elementary maybe even pre-int Mm -hmm. okay? which i don't uh, think you were no, but let, no let's say for argument's sake that you were to get from pre-int mm -hmm. to b1 mm -hmm. in that much time is insane let alone what you did um and yeah just because every now and again you just meet someone who's been like intermediate for like four years and five like and like okay i get there is a plateau there's an intermediate plateau mm -hmm. and it's tough and you've got the kids and you've got you've got work and you've mm -hmm. got this and you've got that mm -hmm. but are you really trying as hard mm -hmm. as you could mm -hmm. be mm -hmm. i don't think you are 
I and maybe I'm really honest. Like these are people yeah. who don't do the homework and don't mm -hmm. do the exercise, and they just come and socialize and drink mm -hmm. tea. It's great. Like English yeah. and language learning is a social enterprise as much, or it's not an, a social activity as much as it is an intellectual one. But mm -hmm. come on, let's actually put some work in here. Come on, what are we doing? Yeah, yeah. And people, I guess, people are learning like languages for different reasons, right? Maybe for some people, if they don't have like a, a goal, a, a clear goal that they're working towards, you know, like exam coming up, or they don't need this for, I don't know. Reasons of employment or something if there's no if it's just like a hobby again people there's all sorts of reasons yeah why people um learn english or german or whatever so if, if that's something you're happy with fine you know um i guess you know I, I wouldn't be too harsh sort of on them criticizing them like oh you've been intermediate for like i don't know this number of years like come on get a grip you know shape up um um, but I think if, if you really want to improve, right, for whatever reason, if you're really sort of motivated, you can, you know, achieve, I don't know, significant good results in a relatively short period of time. But of course, you know, uh, it, it won't come, you know, sort of on its own, right? You, you have to work to to get these results. It, nothing will just magically appear out of thin air. You can't just pay a teacher. Yeah. Uh, paying a teacher is the first start. You're, you're opening this door, whether you're going to enter or not. Um, that's on you. And, and I always think, you know, as a teacher, and I, I sort of, I don't consider myself necessarily in my head, in my mind, you know, an expert English teacher. I consider myself an expert like English learner or language learner, German learner. Um, I think as a learner, I think you should take uh, full responsibility for your learning, not your teacher. Don't just like, if you succeed, uh, if you make progress, if you get what you want to get linguistically, you have yourself, thank yourself, right? Not uh, yourself, not not, not your teacher necessarily. Like uh, they are leading you, right? But if, you, if you're not walking the walk and just talking the talk, you're not going to get there regardless of like how, how great your teacher is. And at the same time, if you fail, uh, mate, that's, that's on you. That's on you, I think. Because again, I think 80%, again, we can mathematically look at this, right? I, I did... 100 hours with a teacher, right? And 500 hours on my own. When this is the proportion that you have, that's when you, chances are you will succeed and, uh, you know, um, improve. But uh, if it's like, you know, 100 hours with a teacher and on my own, I'm, I'm barely doing anything, not doing any homework, I'm not studying on my own informally. Um, I mean, what do you expect, right? Mm -hmm. um, so it, it, it's work just, I guess it's a skill just with like any skill, right? I'm learning swimming now. Um, I'm sort of like not a very confident, strong swimmer, but you know, um, it, it's on me, but the teacher will help me, the teacher will show me, the teacher will correct some mistakes, right? The, the, the swimming instructor. But um, um, ultimately it's down to how much I practice, how much I want that. And uh, with any skill, I think it's like that. And languages are not entirely sort of dissimilar in this regard. Um, Are you actually learning to swim right now? Uh, okay, so basically, I I, I can swim, or I, I could swim when I started uh, the, these uh, <coughs> swimming classes. Um, I, I sort of learned swimming uh, more intuitively without like anyone properly showing me how to swim. So you uh, learned and, swimming like you learned German, basically. Uh, <laughs> well, uh, maybe even yeah, right. So anyway, um, now I'm learning. Like I want to learn things more sort of more properly. Um, my, my breaststroke is already not bad. I can do about um, uh, maybe one, one and a half kilometers, which is not bad, I guess. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, yeah, maybe two if I try. Um, breaststroke, I don't know, supposedly it's one of the sort of more difficult uh, swimming styles to, uh, to, to learn um, in terms of how you do everything that the timing yeah, is important right. yeah, yeah. It, it takes a lot out of you it's not the most efficient stroke I mean, it's not 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 the, not the fastest efficient. yeah but i don't know for some reason i find it i find it's uh, the easiest at least for me for now front crawl um not not so uh not so good for now um uh, without my flippers or, or, or fins uh and yeah it's I'm struggling. this is an interesting moment because i I don't think I had ever met someone who couldn't swim before mm -hmm. I arrived in Russia. Mm -hmm. And it was the weirdest thing for me. I never <laughs> met anyone who couldn't swim because yeah. we, we do swimming in school, right? Yeah. And it's the same for, like, for example, where, so my, my wife, Dasha, she's from Astrakhan originally, uh -huh. where they don't have much snow, right? Yeah. And then she moved with her parents to Nizhny Vartovsk when she was still at school. Mm -hmm. And then when she went to Fizra at school, they were all going skiing, right? Yeah. And of course, she'd never touched a ski in her life. She was from Africa. Uh -huh. She, she yeah. couldn't ski. And all these Siberian kids thought she was a loser. Mm -hmm. right? And that would be the same for me because I can't. I've never touched a ski, not even with yeah. one finger. All right. So I, 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 I mean, even though I lived in Tumen for like six years, I still have never skied. And it's the same thing with swimming. It's like really weird. And it's, it manifests itself in the strangest way. So like... Um, 
for example, if I'm in class, mm -hmm. sometimes I'll do an activity where um, some, some teachers, they like to throw a dice or they do a random number generator. I like to flip a coin. And it's mm -hmm. like, you know, we're going to do some sort of speaking activity. And I give you a topic, like, for example, Sergei, I want you to talk about um, your favorite. The game, the game. Uh, talk I've about just the game, it. for example. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then if it's heads, you've got to tell the truth. If it's mm -hmm. tails, you've got to lie. And then we've got to ask you questions mm -hmm. and figure mm -hmm. out if you're telling to the find truth. Find out. Yeah, well, okay. Yeah. This is how I would do that. Uh -huh. Watching. Huh? Okay. And that is something that I've been doing since I was a kid. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And I, if I give this coin to nine out of 10 Russians, they'll go uh -huh. like this. And they won't yeah. because, it, because it's not a really common thing to do. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah, like flipping yeah, yeah. a coin. It's not, think about that. How mm -hmm. often do you do that? But in England, not anytime often. you Hardly want to make a, a split second decision or something like mm -hmm. that, you flip a coin. And we, mm -hmm. I've been doing that since, and it's in my muscle memory. Mm -hmm. right? mm -hmm. It's really interesting. And, mm -hmm. the, and it's, um, it's not only physical things, it's stuff that you learn at school as well. Mm -hmm, right? mm -hmm. um, for example, if you, if you say the number 365, a lot of like Russian people wouldn't necessarily think about, does anything pop into your head when I say 365? 365 um, days in a year. Exactly, yeah. yeah. But again, that, um, <clears throat> maybe I'm mistaken about this, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but you know that's one of the things we learn at school we learn there are seven mm -hmm. days in a week 52 weeks in a year um 365 days or maybe it was weeks actually maybe it was weeks 52, 52 weeks, weeks yeah week. yeah uh-huh I, I might be thinking of weeks uh -huh. I, I was talking about this with someone yeah. mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. she said that um she only knew that there were 52 weeks in a year because she works in hr mm -hmm. and they have this calendar like an american yeah, yeah, calendar yeah, yeah. where it's week one week two week three mm -hmm. right um and that's just a thing that it wouldn't necessarily pop into a Russian's head. Like I'm the mm -hmm. same. If I hear this thing, um, I can't remember what it's called in English. Couple of there, as in couple there. Yes, registry in English. I don't know what it's called. But that's like that's like so book one lesson one for Russian uh -huh. kids in physics. Like we don't we don't learn that. We don't learn anything uh -huh. about that. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's just yeah. so, such yeah. an easy thing for you guys. But for us, it's just like what are you talking about? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah, interesting observation. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Sergey. Thank You're you. very welcome. Cheers. <laughs> um, I wanted to go back um, a little bit to talking about... Um, a game? <laughs> Sorry. A game, which uh, you yeah. thoroughly lost. I haven't been losing it very actively recently, but every time I talk to you, you know, <laughs> that's you're... what happens. <laughs> Your game on just goes... Boop, boop, yes. Boop, boop, boop. <laughs> yeah. um, to talking more about English and about, so you, you sort of mentioned very briefly stuff about Cambridge exams or the Gota mm -hmm. Institute. Um, let's focus on Cambridge stuff because um, you, as as I did, um, got qualified as as a Cambridge speaking mm -hmm. examiner. And what was your what was your whole experience with that? Because for me, uh, okay, I'm going to be super duper honest here. Mm -hmm. Pretty much anyone can be a Cambridge examiner. It's not that big a deal. Mm -hmm. You do not have to be any kind of expert. The, and there's there's like a bit of training you have to do, but mm -hmm. it is so easy. Mm -hmm. It's so easy. Anyone from the street could probably do it because honestly, you get so you've got the um the. Do you still work for Cambridge, by the way? Ah, uh, I'm not even sure. Uh, basically, I've I've decided that this thing is not entirely um, something that I want to focus on. Okay, so I, cool. I, I I still think maybe this qualification maybe it hasn't run out yet. Although I'm not sure 100. percent You have to like every year, right, to um, do but some. But basically, you're, you're not worried too. about offending Cambridge. Uh, say, not particularly. Like no, okay, let's cool. try not to offend them too much. But um, I'm, I'm probably I'll try that, and that's... strike just the right balance. So yeah. you've got all of the framework, right? Fuck them, by the way. Hmm? Fuck them, by the way. Oh yeah, fuck em, big, fuck em. Big time. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, so you've got, you've got, depending on what exam it is, because obviously for FCE and below, lexical resource and grammatical resource is one category. But so you've got grammatical resource, lexical resource, discourse management, interactive mm -hmm. communication, pronunciation. Um, I didn't miss any, did I? I think that's it. Whatever. <sighs> Sounds whatever. about right. Yeah. And so you've got a scale from zero, which no one ever gets, mm -hmm. right through to five, and then there's mm -hmm. three point five, two point five, mm -hmm. four point five, one point five. Um, and you need to watch a video mm -hmm. of someone speaking and you give them a mark, but you can be one whole point in the wrong direction. So let's say that there's someone who's speaking who is, a f who is um, let's say, three, right? Slap mm -hmm. bang in the middle, mm -hmm. okay? Um, you can give them a four or a two and you still pass. Mm 
mm-hmm. with flying colors yeah right and and that there, there are little sneaky tricks that you can do when you're when you're getting qualified as a cambridge examiner like for example if if there's someone who is a five who's an obvious five mm-hmm. no one gives them five they give them four a four yeah to because, cover their ass exactly yeah um it's it's not very difficult it's really easy and then you've got to do like the training stuff online to get re-accredited that's mm. not hard at all uh yeah i don't know i mean yeah i, I agree with you um I, I do find it difficult like to actually assess someone right and to be like really accurate with your assessment that i always like i always doubt like is it is it really like what i'm what I've got in mind, what, what I'm, what I've come up with, is that accurate or not? Uh, you, to be, you know, just to be on the safe side, you, you have this urge, right? To give them, you think, okay, this person is really good. I give them, a, I'm going to give them a four, right? And suddenly they're no worse than a three, but I don't know if it's like to the right. Uh, I'm covering that that range too. It's like I understand that, you know, uh, I'm covering my ass here, right? And like I, I shouldn't be doing that, right? I should be, um, I don't know, like. Uh, Sometimes you have this urge to play it safe where I think maybe it's not necessarily something that's very um, fair to the, the candidates, right? Mm-hmm. So obviously you want to do a good job, but uh, I I always sort of like doubt, like, is it what, what I'm, the number I've come up with? Is it really accurate or not? I don't know. So like this assessment thing, which is obviously like supposedly that that's what this all is about, right? Not the formal stuff, like this frame that you've got, how you read it, right? I mean, obviously you need to stick to it and, um, and say exactly what it says, all the uh, sort of phrases there. And like, in terms of like, uh, it, it's, a, it's a piece of cake, I think, for the most part, in terms of like organizing it, right? And making it look um, to an outsider, like, you know, the real deal, right? A, a, an actual real exam, but uh, actually being sort of um, fair and doing the best job you can where you are, you give them a number and that's a fair number that's really reflective of their ability. I don't know, I always sort of, doubt my uh, my own um assessment i don't know actually you know, I, I i don't even know if i should be using the stance i've been doing this maybe i i did this for a number of years i'm, I'm not sure which one that is uh maybe again maybe my qualification has already um expired um mm-hmm. but um th- that that i've never had any problems you you, you record these exams and you then send this recording somewhere to your team leader and they need to check that you also did a good job, not just the examiners, the, the candidates, right? Uh, mm-hmm. But also you need to do a good job and they will sort of this this quality assurance, yeah, right? Quality thing. Control, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I've never had any issues with that, right? I, I got this qualification in 2016, so never, at no point have I had any um, problems. Someone telling me, you know, oh, you're not doing a good enough job. This person is like, I don't know, a four and you gave them a 2.5 or something. Uh, mm-hmm. Never. Right. Um, every time it's been like you know crickets, nothing, silence from them, which is a good sign. It means you've done you've done a good job, or you know um, you know a nice comment. Yeah, everything's fine. Good job, a job well done. Uh, so um, maybe it's just me being neurotic, but at the same time, I don't know. I, I always doubt my own. Um, Do you remember your examiner here. number? Uh, not off off the top of my head. Uh, FC something. FC because uh, FC and the numbers. Um, I've got it. I've got yeah, football club. Yeah, that's how I, I remember, remember it. Football I club. Think FC. I remember mine. Uh, it was DB six eight GE, or mm-hmm. it might have been six nine. I can't remember. Mm-hmm. No, I would have remembered six nine. I think it was six eight. Yeah, yeah. I've got my certificate somewhere on the uh, contact you page. Yeah, Which yeah. You're not uh, supposed to do, but uh, I don't really. Care. Really, <laughs> uh, I thought again. Uh, I didn't mean to like violate any rules or anything. From what I know, you, 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 it's okay to like um, like on your resume, for example, to to say that you are a Cambridge speaking examiner. Which well, a yeah, resume, resume it can be sure. online, right? For for everybody to see, right? If it's online, which that's why I thought it was okay yeah, to. Yeah, I think I think what up. Cambridge frown upon is people trying to profiteer. Yeah, sort of market it. Yeah, like say that this is my yeah uh, yeah competitive so... advantage. For example, if I, I mean, I only do the speaking club, but let's say, for example, if I did like Cambridge exam preparation courses, which thank God I don't do because I find them very boring. Mm-hmm. Um, but let, let's say that I did. And then if I said um, exclusive lessons with qualified Cambridge speaking exam, yeah, that then is, they could yeah. revoke my status. Yeah. But, but I yeah. don't really give a shit because I don't really plan on. I'm not particularly interested in working That's for Cambridge in the future. Pretty much my attitude too. Yeah, I don't really care that much. But again, uh, I hope I'm not doing anything like um, that. That's frowned upon because you know I'm, I'm not doing that the way I see it. 
And um, also, it's my qualification, which I, um, you know, not that I paid for, but my employer paid for as part of my labor for mm-hmm, that company. Mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. can't I do what I like with it? Mm-hmm. You know, Cambridge doesn't mm-hmm. own my, mm-hmm. my status as an examiner. So, yeah. Fuck yeah, I yeah, agree yeah. with your previous statement. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. So, quick, 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 just a quick question: Is everything still okay on on your side? Like my audio and video, my video feed is uh, uh it's, it was bit... getting a little blurry there. I don't. Yeah, know. yeah, but in terms of audio, at least, is everything fine? Oh yeah, it's all. Yeah, yeah, cool. Uh, I don't know. Yeah. Do I don't know if that's on my side, Zoom or something else, but I hope at least the audio is. Well, I think we might have someone listening in from uh, mm-hmm. KGB. Yeah, yeah. The Belarusian KGB. That's, that's crazy, right? They still have KGB in Belarus. Yes, they, yes, they do. Yeah, that's still a thing over there in Belarus. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But let's not get onto that territory. Well, let's not do that. <laughs> we will, Quote yes. Ryanair. Yeah. All right, then. Um, Sergio, we've been going for about an hour. So um, I think we can uh, wrap it up. And yeah, um, yeah we'll, uh, we'll coordinate uh, visa, yeah. marketing and all of that stuff. But uh, Sure been a pleasure having you on the show thanks a lot a lot mike yeah thank, thanks for having me on it's uh, it's uh, it's a good show it's nice to be on and uh, uh thanks for inviting me uh keep up the good work and, and what's and, the name yeah. of your group once again so people can go and uh yes uh firehose of english it's vk.com slash firehose check it out check it out right now don't yeah, think yeah. just subscribe just, just just subscribe yeah all right yeah. and <laughs> don't lose the game do not uh or do do that or do live your own Maybe. lives okay Bye-bye now, people. See ya.